Uh, you said that in this month, more than ever, where Krishna manifested more than usually, Bhakta, Vatsarya, pastimes. Would you list, list them? You, you narrated, you know, the last... Govardhan Puja. Govardhan Puja. What is so special about Govardhan Puja? You can answer that question in unlimited ways. But just take one. You know, normally, Krishna's with his parents in the early morning, just as we said. Krishna's time is divided up between the different categories of his devotees, his parents, his gopas, his gopis. His time is divided up. For seven days and seven nights, Krishna was with all his devotees, reciprocating with them, endlessly. Nobody had to go home, nobody had to cook, nobody had to go to bed, <laughs> and nobody had to watch Krishna leave them to go to his next group of associates. All together, they all as one relished his loving reciprocation non-stop for seven days seven nights, as it is, that is an exceptional display of his love for his devotees. So, so this is one, this is one, and then Krishna returned to Vrindavan during Kartik, and then Mother Yashoda bound Krishna, and what else? Appearance of Radhakund. Appearance of Radhakund. Anything else? Any other pastimes? Or any other? Oh, so many pastimes. Mm -hmm. Deepavali. Gopastami. Mm -hmm. Krishna graduates from a calf herd boy to a cow herd boy. Thus reciprocating with the full grown cows as he had only done before with the calves. It is Krishna's desire to lavishly reward us in the most exceptional ways for even the most insignificant services offered. And that desire of Krishna's is fulfilled this month by the grace of his queen. Kartika Rani, which is the name of Radha, as the daughter of Kirtita, a Kirtika, awarded to this month. Anything else? Thank you, Maharaj, for singing our hearts with the Sibana and Krishna Kitab. And in terms of chronology, I was trying to understand, did Krishna return to Uddhava, to Vrindavan after, like, they met at Kurukshetra or after the battle of Kurukshetra? When, when? No, nobody had gone to Kurukshetra yet. And, you know, chronology is quite, it can be quite tricky in Bhagavatam because. <laughs> You know, you have the meeting at Kurukshetra when even Duryodhana is still friendly, um, coming after the battle of Kurukshetra where everybody perished. Was, um, Bhagavatam is not chronological, it's thematic. 
But um, we hadn't made it to Kurukshetra yet. That was that was your pilgrimage from Dwarka. Anything else? Yes. Friends, you mentioned Masaram uh, Malgashir. Krishna says I am Malgashir, sir. But uh, you just uh, saw Prabhupada says it is November, December, which is how we, the calendar flows. But you said that it was September, October. So how did we understand that? What's that? Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that uh, I am Magashirsha. Magashirsha, but um, Prabhupada's purport says it is November, December. So typically in the flow of the calendar months, somewhere around December that we can call the Magashirsha month. But we were explaining its connection to this month. How do we understand that? That's how I've already explained. I've heard it is September, October. You're saying it's November, December? Yeah, in the purport of Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada says, the months of November and December are considered the best of all months because in India grains are collected from the fields at this time and the people become very happy. And of course, spring is a season universally like because it's neither too hot not too cold and the flowers and trees will blossom and flourish. In spring there are also many ceremonies commemorating Krishna's pastimes. Therefore this is considered to be the most joyful of all seasons and it is the representative of Supreme Lord Krishna. It's 10th chapter 35. Margaret Shir says November, December. Yes. Well then, Krishna's month is following Srimati Radharani's. Which is more appropriate. Thank you. Thank you for this significant detail. And if you, the class is over, we just have questions and answers. So if you wish to go and have breakfast, please feel free to leave. We can, one more. <laughs> Getting back to uh, chronology. Uh, Bakura took Krishna from Vrindavan and then he dealt with Kamsa and after dealing with Kubja then he went with Uddhava. So it was a time period leaving Vrindavan and then returning to Vrindavan. Oh, I'm not good with chronology. Anybody know how many years between leaving Vrindavan and returning? My next question would be, what, that is, is that mentioned anywhere at all in, uh, in a Krishna book? What? The Krishna returning to Vrindavan? You know? No, it's alluded to in the Bhagavatam, but it's not specifically stated. Um, <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada mentions in his purports in CC that Gopal Champu. And Srila Prabhupada even gives the chapters in Gopal Champu, which are almost identical to the chapters of Krishna book. But there's additional chapters. Krishna returns to Vrindavan. Krishna marries the gopis. And It's there in Gopal Champu. So when Lalita was dressing Radharani, is that she alluding, was... alluding to the wedding? Is that, was that the period of the wedding? No. no. It wasn't so much that Lalita was dressing, she was kind of making sure that Radha couldn't leave until everybody else finished dressing her. And even then, that she would not run to Krishna, which she was so prone to do. Lalita was determined that Krishna would come to her. 
Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki hi jai. Thank you.